By now, you've probably heard about the incident with author J.D. Barker, who allegedly sent out an email requesting book talkers create content of his book in some rather risque poses, and this has blown up over on Book Talk. Today, we are going to be talking to our favorite IP and entertainment lawyer to look at the legal side of what happened. We are going to be using the words allegedly because this is brand new and in my opinion, so we want to make sure we cover all our bases with this one, and information is continuing to roll out. So let's jump in to make sure you as a book talker are protected when you get emails like this. My name is Tony Oikasis. I'm an adjunct professor of entertainment law and IP at New York Law School and I have an Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok account called the IP Professor that is dedicated to all things intellectual property. We recently had something happen in the book industry where an author sent out an email asking for book talkers and creators to create content marketing their books. They would be paid for these pieces of content that would have to be sent in for approval in advance. And in the body of that email, several suggestions were given for the types of content to be created. These were not great choices to be sending out because it could be a little problematic with the social media platforms and some of the suggestions were not great for younger audiences. So Tony, I want to talk a little bit about what we saw in the email and I want to talk a little bit about how content creators can make sure that they are safe and protected in the space while they are creating content on behalf of authors. So can you break down a little bit about what we saw in this email? Yeah, so uh, this is involving uh, the story that probably you've seen if you're in the book talk, book talk community involving uh, author uh, J.D. Barker, who was seeking promotion of his latest book. Um, I believe it was called uh, Behind a Closed Door, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, he was essentially soliciting uh, younger women to, like Cam said, engage in fairly, uh, allegedly, fairly sexually obvious uh, behavior or sexually uh like uh, almost like yeah. it, it, it exactly like it, it's almost like it was encouraging or sort of tipping on the t on the line of like being highly sexual either way all for the for the purpose of promoting uh jd barker's book and as cam mentioned you know he provided suggestions of captioning of uh kind of like the music to use and and whatnot and obviously he was offering a fee for the these women these reviewers to promote his book and it seemed to have started as low as 100 dollars uh for i guess like a baseline if, if obviously he did something a little bit more maybe it would it would be contingent on his review and whatnot now obviously there are a lot of red flags with that email um there's been some emails that have come forth from uh, from JD Barker that uh, allege uh, responses statements from him that allege that his PR firm was behind it or, or a PR firm that uh, he hired to do the promotion of his book was behind these emails to young women where the, the sexual content was suggested. It, it's a whole thing. It's quite <laughs> literally a web of intricacies and lies. And obviously we're working off of allegations. We don't have proof positive, like definitive right. proof of things. Mm -hmm. We just, we just have to work off of the information that's been shared to the general public. Mm -hmm. And obviously nothing's been proved in a court of law. No charges have been had, right. nothing of that sort. But this is actually a very good case study to talk about. Mm -hmm. What do you do if you are a reviewer and you're being asked to produce content? And this happens not just in the book talk community or you know, generally speaking, the publishing community, but this happens broadly in the influencer community. How many times mm -hmm. have influencers been approached by brands to do coverage of, let's say, a PR box that they get in the mail? Or let's say they're asked to go to a movie premiere to help promote a movie that is coming out in theaters. This happens time and time and time again. But what a lot of people, especially influencers, may not realize is that uh, with, with the act of promoting something comes a lot of legal you know, uh, situations, le legal requirements that come with the promotion of that content. And you probably have seen it before on TikTok. There'll be like a little bit of a disclaimer that says paid sponsorship. Mm -hmm. If you're on Instagram, it will say essentially the same thing, or you've definitely seen hashtag ad, hashtag mm -hmm. sponsorship, hashtag sponsored in some form. All of that is because under the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, if you're an influencer and you've been approached or solicited by a brand or by any sort of entity to help promote a good or a service or some other type of thing, um, there it comes with it the obligation that you have to disclose to your audience mm -hmm. that it's a paid sponsorship, that it's an ad. The whole premise of it is 
if you didn't disclose that, then you're essentially deceiving consumers to believe that you authentically use this product and you're, you're just, you know, you're having at it, you're talking about it and you're, you're, you know, promoting the product without giving that disclosure that the brand approached you. And it, essentially the, the difficult, the, 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 the FTC is trying to point out that, th that if you don't have those proper disclosures, you're not being transparent with your audience mm -hmm. and that could give rise to some type of consumer fraud activity essentially taking place. So the bottom line is if you're, uh, in the business of reviewing books, you're in the business of reviewing products. Uh, or doing any sort of PR work with the brand, you, and you're being paid to do that, there are a lot of things you have to keep in mind. First and foremost, you have to read up on the FTC guidelines for influencers. It's all available on the FTC website, ftc.gov. You can check it out. They consistently put out a lot of releases mm -hmm. and other guidelines about this. And they actually, I would say they're the most active government agency to almost give everybody a tip off as to what's to come. Like, I wish the IRS were kind of that gracious <laughs> to give releases about, oh, if yeah. you don't pay your taxes, you could get audited or whatever. I mean, you know, I, I digress. But either way, you know, FTC is good about that. So I yeah. would say go to the FTC website for those guidelines. Um, and, and that includes them talking explicitly about not just the whole essence of hashtag sponsored or hashtag ad and incorporating that not only in the captioning, but even in the body of the video so that you right. literally are legally protecting you and you're, you're not leaving any room for sort of speculation that it isn't an, a sponsored ad or is a sponsored ad. You're, you're making it definitively clear. So mm -hmm. I think that that's important. The FTC would also give the guidelines about using commercial music if you're promoting a product. Yeah. And we've talked about that before uh, with cam, you could check it out in the playlist below, mm -hmm. but Bottom line is if you're using commercial music to promote a good or service, that's no different than if Target or Walmart or Macy's ran an ad talking about products that they have on the shelves, t-shirt for five bucks, sweatshirt for 10 bucks, pants for 10 bucks, and it's played over music by let's say Dua Lipa or Post Malone. Of course, that's commercial use, uh, that, that, that's music that's being used to promote a brand, to promote a product or a service. Obviously, that's something that would trigger some type of broader synchronization license agreement with the record label and the music publisher if the intent is to use the actual sound recording in an ad campaign. So if you're going to use commercial music for your book review, th then the expectation is yet yeah, you got to go to the record label and the music publisher yeah. to seek permission for use of the music in that context. So all those guidelines are pretty much laid out. There's a bunch of different uh, videos out there by by us talking about these exact issues, but I'll, I'll leave you with essentially the most important advice that I could give, which is if you even have the, sh the a shred of a doubt of like, like literally like a mole like a molecule, a, a millimeter of doubt that you're doing something that is wrong. You're, you're just unsure of things. Go talk to a lawyer, go s speak to a lawyer that specializes in the influencer marketplace. They are buttoned up and are in the know on all things FTC and influencer guidelines, especially when you're working uh, um, on specific social media platforms. A lot of social media platforms may have their own guidelines on sort of this branded partnership activity that does take place quite commonly on those platforms. And that would extend to book reviews. So talk to a lawyer, ask for that guidance. Don't be afraid to ask for help. The whole premise of being a lawyer is to solicit and to essentially advocate for clients. And I think that that's quite evident here. And it's incredibly important to point out and to remember that when you are doing branded content, it is still branded sponsored content, whether you are being paid with money or you're being paid in trade for a product or service that is all covered by what you're doing. So if you have been reached out to buy a company or you've reached out to them to work on this relationship, all of that does count as sponsored branded content. If you're not sure, if you feel uncomfortable, if you feel like they're clearly missing hashtags in their requirement or music licensure information in their requirements, this is something you need to ask questions on. You need to get very clear on that. And if they don't have proper answers, if they don't know what they're doing, don't take it. That is a dangerous situation for you to be in. You want to make sure that they're very clear and they're very 
on board with the legal way of doing things so that you can be as well. Even if they're struggling, if you know what you're doing, it may not be the best choice for you to work with this company or with this entity. So if you start to see some of these little red flags in these emails, make sure you're paying attention to it, ask your questions, and then get out. It is better to pass up an opportunity that is questionable than to get yourself in some potential trouble. And if you are not going directly to a lawyer to ask those questions, you have to be responsible for that and get yourself away from those situations. There's a lot going on with this. So if you've got questions, go ahead and drop those down below and follow along because we are continuing to help keep you legally protected in this space as more and more things happen inside of the publishing industry. We want to get your questions answered. And as always, you can reach out to Tony on his social media. Tony, where can everybody find you? You can find me on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok at the IP Professor. You can check out my entertainment law podcast called End Scene with new episodes dropping every Friday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Drop your questions down below. This is an ongoing incident. So as more comes to light, we're going to be having further discussions on this. And we want to make sure we have this really important conversation in this space. So drop your questions down below. Make sure you're using the proper words, allegedly and in my opinion. And we want to make sure that we're following along for daily videos, helping you navigate the world of publishing from your writing to your publishing to marketing to make this your most profitable and most stress-free time ever as an author. We'll see you in the upcoming episodes.